This is Incredible Stories Podcast, Episode 19, The Tale of the Shipwrecked Sailor. And hello again, everyone. It's time for yet another Incredible Stories podcast. I'm Josh Virla, your loquacious host. And thanks for being here. Today, I'll be bringing you a story that most likely isn't true, but is incredible in the sense that it is one of the oldest, if not the oldest story handed down through the ages. More than 4,000 years old, this short Egyptian tale is slightly older than the Epic of Gilgamesh, and this ancient story is written in hieratic script, which is an Egyptian priestly form of cursive writing, different from hieroglyphics. The fantastic story tells of an Egyptian merchant coming back from a failed expedition, and he is worried that the pharaoh will be angry. His junior in command attempts to cheer him up and tells him a story of his own failed expedition years earlier where he is cast upon a deserted island and he talks to a great serpent before returning home. The story is undoubtedly one of the first examples of the archetypical shipwreck story and features the literary devices of a story within a story within a story. Very Inception-like. Q horns. Because of its age and translation wiggle room in the original text, there are many interpretations of the story. And that's understandable because ancient Egyptian is tricky as it employs puns and hominins quite often. So I could just read you the straight story, but I think for you today I'll do something special. Which is why today I decided to present this story to you in a more theatrical form. And you may recognize one of the voices. Zane has so generously decided to come back and perform for this episode. And also Ariel Hicks will be performing as well and a little bit of me. So with that, just sit right back and you'll hear a tale. Secure the mooring lines, men. Make sure the ship is secure. My lord Nefir, why so troubled? Let your heart be satisfied. Ha <laughs> ha, we've made it home. Praise to the Ra and Tefna, for we've made it all safely back to dry land after such a long time abroad. Look at the sailors, how they rejoice in the arms of their loved ones after so much rowing. Smile, for we've made it back in good health from the ends of Nubia and through the lands of Kush. Nefir, we've made it back, back to sweet Egypt. My lord, come, let us wash ourselves, and prepare to go tell Pharaoh of our travels. Amos, our business venture was not a prosperous one. How can you tell me to be happy at such a time as this when I have to deliver to Pharaoh the dreadful news of our ill-fated voyage? Unfurl your brow, Nefir, for if you speak with eloquence and choose your words wisely, the Pharaoh shall not punish thee. All will be well. Convey sensibility, and may your words not stammer. You shall not be faulted for an unprosperous venture. Remember, a man's mouth may rescue him. Bah! Your words wander. While a man's mouth may save him, his words can also doom him. Your mouth speaks freely what is in your heart. Do you always speak in such a way? I worry, because your likeness of the situation is foolish. What know you of this situation? Ah, my friend, let me put you at ease. May I regale you with a count of what happened to me once? Do as you wish, Amos. Your optimism is wearing on me. My lord, my tale begins when I was just a sailor, many years ago. I had set out on an expedition to the mine of the Pharaoh, on a ship 180 feet long. Almost! Fear not of the approaching storm, for you sail with the finest 120 sailors Egypt has to offer! 
It is not that I fear the storm, Yafra, and I am honored to be a member of your experience and line-hearted crew. I am troubled by the 12-foot waves battering our ship. This slight breeze is nothing but a mere tickle upon the leather chests of this crew. Take comfort, for the shore is on the horizon! Man overboard! Brace yourself, men! The sea is looking for some company! Amos, how are you holding up? My hands and heart be steadfast. Good! Good! Just make sure! Yafra! Yafra! Shipmates! If you can hear my voice, join me upon this plank of cedar! Gone! The ship! Everyone! All gone! Why am I the only one here on this beach? I grow hungry after three days. I must forage for something to eat, lest I die of starvation. So bountiful this island. I've never seen so ample a nourishment on an island. Let's see, I have 15 figs, 2 cucumbers, and 3 fish. I shall give an offering unto the gods, and then have myself a feast. An offering to Osiris, the lord of Osiris, the great god, the lord of Abydos. I give you an offering of fish, figs, and every good and pure thing upon which a god lives. That was a much needed lift to my soul. What's that sound? Is the sea quickly rising? No, it sounds thunderous like people coming toward me. Or an earthquake? No, again. Why, it's... A great bearded serpent. Surely a 40, no, 45 feet in length. Do you fancy my gold and lapis scales? Or do you come here to battle? Speak human. O oh, great serpent, I throw myself upon the ground before you, like a temple. Who brought you here, Kalina? I see no ship. How did you make it to my island? Speak now, little one, and fail not to tell me the truth. For if you lie to me, I shall extinguish you as a flame from a candle. I sense your word, little one, but only hear the utterance of fear in your mouth full of sand. Perhaps a change of venue will coax your tongue to speak. I shall carry you in my mouth to my nest. D -d 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 Don't eat me, mighty king of serpents!
Aha! I'm all in one piece. Now, little one, answer me and choose your words wisely as your life depends on it. Oh, mighty serpent, I beg thee for mercy. I was on a mission for Pharaoh. I was part of a crew of 120 of the bravest and seaworthy men Egypt had to offer. We were on our way to the mine of the Pharaoh, and we fear not sky, land, or sea. But as we approached land, a mighty and terrible storm approached, tearing our ship in two. The wind howled like jackals, and I struggled to stay afloat amongst the towering waves. All around me they crashed, but I managed to grab a hold of a piece of wood. And there I clung, as I was tossed around the sea. All upon the ship perished under the waves, except for me. The gods saw to it that I be spared, and cast me upon the beaches of this island. And behold, here I stand before you today. I see the sorrow in your face now, and sense still a fear amongst you. Fear not, little one, and be not sad, for it is Ra who has spared your life and brought you before me upon the island of the Blessed. My island lacks nothing and contains all the things which are good. To these things, you may help yourself. Oh, thank you, great bearded one. I shall tell you. I can see forward in time and will relay to you a prophecy. Know that you shall be stranded on this island for four months. And after the four months have passed, a ship will pass near with sailors on board, of which you will know. When they come, you shall go with them, where you shall live happily with your family, grow old, and die in your hometown. But darkness in one's heart can prevent this. Great Serpent, four months alone with nothing but my own heart shall drive me mad. Happy is he who tells what he has tasted, a painful thing having passed by. Since you have survived a great sorrow and face hardships, allow me to share the cataclysm that befell this island many years ago. One fateful night, my family and I lived here happily. In total, we numbered 75, not counting my adopted daughter. Ha, it is almost time for dinner, but before we can eat, we are in need of figs. They are sweet and enjoyed by your brothers and children. Wow, they are on the other side of the island. Perhaps we can forgo them for tonight. I'm tired and do not feel like going to the other side of the island. Ah, oh, please, Father, can we have some figs tonight? Tomorrow is so far away. <laughs> I cannot say no to my little girl. You make my heart warm with your joy. I shall go to the other side of the island and get the figs. Yay! <laughs> I went that night through the forest to the far side of the island to retrieve the figs as my family gathered around for dinner. I was alone when the star fell. I must make it back to them. No. No. Don't leave me. Come back to me. see the star fell upon them, burning all of my family. I found their bodies charred and stacked upon each other's in a heap. Like you, I was the only one spared. 
and now alone with nothing but the memories of their hearts to strengthen my own. I, I, I'm so sorry you had to endure such suffering of loss for so long. I tell you this so you will be strong. If you are able to subdue the sorrow in your heart and overcome your fears of loneliness, I affirm that you shall embrace your loved ones. Your children will fill your arms, and you shall kiss the lips of your wife. You shall see your home. You will know your life to be more beautiful than anything you've known when you're reunited with your family. Oh, great serpent, I bow before you for blessing me with such a pleasing prophecy. When I return to Egypt, I shall make your power and presence known to the Pharaoh. Your great generosity shall be repaid, and I will bring to you sacred oils and perfumes. I, I, I will bring you incense, and make sacrifices, and bring forth ships carrying treasures of Egypt for you, and you will be spoken about with honor throughout the land, all of these things befitting for any god. <laughs> Why do you laugh, great one? You are not rich in these things, little one. You are a mere commoner, and I... <laughs> I am a prince of the land of Punt. I have all these things, lacking in nothing except for the oil which you speak of. Don't trouble yourself with such things. There is no need for you to return here once you leave, little one. In fact, once you leave this island, it shall become as the water disappearing beneath the waves. And the months passed just as the mighty snake foretold. My rescue was nigh. Amos, you come to me to give news of a ship. Yes, Great One. How did you know? I was in a tree and spotted a ship approaching. It is as you had seen. <laughs> I know all about this island, little one. Now go. Go to your home and see again your children and wife. In two months' time, you shall be back in Egypt. Make my name good in your homeland. This is all you owe me. Yes, Your Excellence, of course. But before you go, Morris, take these gifts of perfumes, exotic woods, ivory, apes, and a variety of other precious treasures from my land. Amos, I wish you health. And so, I made my way to that boat and called to the sailors. We all shouted praises to the Serpent Lord, and in two months' time, made it home. Hmm, then what? I then made my way to Pharaoh, once home, and told of my tale of adventure. I gave him the gifts that were given to me from the great serpent. The Pharaoh was pleased with my gifts and my words, and so gave me a position in the government and allowed me followers of my own. You see, it is good to speak, and it is good for people to listen. Amos, my friend, just stop talking. One does not give water at dawn to a goose that will be slaughtered at noon. And that's the story of the shipwrecked sailor. And now you know what I know. I love this story, and perhaps even more, I love the author of the story, a scribe who signed his work at the end as Cunning Fingers, Ameni Amena, Son of Ameni. Now that's quite the name. This tale was not only just a fantasy trek exploring early archetypes of story, specifically the castaway, but also was a tale of optimism even if it fell upon deaf ears. And for being such an early work of writing, remember over 4,000 years old, the literary devices of story within a story within a story seems quite cutting edge in concept. The framework of two friends returning from a failed expedition is a great setup. Worried about getting in trouble by the head cheese, one worried wart fears the fallout from a tragic trip. 
His friend then decides to comfort the sad sack by retelling a fantastic story that befell him, where he was told a tale of tragedy to comfort him during his own tragedy. And the moral of the story? Be positive and don't let fear keep you from talking. At least, that's what I took from it. And I hope you got something out of it too. Now, I'm going to link some versions of the story as told non-theatrically, because I took a little bit of liberties here and added some details that made it more performable. But check out the show notes and you can look at the original text yourselves. And with that, I'll end as always with a haiku. Snakes on an island. I mean, really big snakes, man. Why haven't you left? And that's all the time for you guys this time. Check out our main site for other stories on IncredibleStoriesPodcast.com. Send me an email with haikus or show suggestions, or if you just want to say hey, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at IncredPod. Rate us on iTunes and peep us out on YouTube and Stitcher. For Incredible Stories Podcast, I'm Josh, and remember, the journey of a thousand tales begins with the first word. Yeah.